Grace to you and peace in the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a joy to greet you on this Sunday, January the 21st, 2024, the third Sunday after the Epiphany as the service of worship emanates from the sanctuary of St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church located on the corner of East 40th Street and Central Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, where I, Henry Curtis, serve as pastor. So as I welcome each and every one of you here in the sanctuary, and as I welcome those of you who are worshiping with us online, let us stand and join the choir in singing our introit, There's a Blessing in This House Waiting for You. Feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Lord, 
Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is his holy temple, and all the earth sides before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh, sing to the Lord. You may be seated. It is prayer time. And the altar is open for those who want to bring your joys, sorrows, and concerns to God in prayer. And know that when you bring your burden to the Lord, you can leave it here. Don't take it back with you. But God can do more for us than we can think of and or ask. So the altar is open. It is prayer time. And for those worshiping with us online, make your space wherever you are your personal prayer altar and take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Let us pray. God, we're grateful once again to be able to proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We thank you for last night's rest and for this morning's rising. We thank you, Lord, that you gave us safe travel through the snowy and icy highways and byways of Cleveland, but you thought it not robbery to receive us unto yourself one more time. So we thank you, God, that you opened the doors of the church to us once more. Thank you, Lord, that you opened your heart to us once more. Thank you, Lord, that you opened your arms of love to us once more. And we thank you, God, that you allowed us to open our eyes to see yet another day. For those, Lord, who wish they could be here, but for various reasons and circumstances in their lives, they cannot, we pray that you would touch them at their point of need. And even though they're physically absent from us, we pray that you would give us a spiritual communion with them and by the power of your Holy Spirit, let them know that there's some faithful folk on the corner of East 40th Street and Central Avenue who are praying for them, praying for their healing, praying for their wholeness, praying for their restoration, praying, Lord, for their well-being, that even though they're not with us in body, they're with us in spirit. So, God, for those who are in need of your healing, touch, touch them at their point of need. Bless their medical providers and caregivers with the knowledge they need to treat, but ultimately we commend them to your son, Jesus Christ, the great physician for healing. For those families who've been touched by the death angel, remind them that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal, and those aren't idle words, but those words are backed up by Jesus who suffered, bled, died, and rose again, that we might have a right to the tree of life. So even as their hearts are heavy, let them mourn, not as those who have no hope, but to have hope in the risen and victorious Lord. God, around this war-torn world, people are suffering. People are crying out for justice, for mercy, for peace. And we pray that you would traverse this globe and bring peace and healing and restoration in all of our war-torn lands. God, while we're in the warmth of this sanctuary, there are people on this cold January day who are out of doors, who have no place to call home. We pray, God, for the shelters, for the people who fund them, that in this time that we would be generous and resourceful to help those who are in need, who are hurting, who are suffering, who don't have the infrastructure to withstand the, the cold and the weather that we experience here in the North, God. We pray that people would just open up their hearts. Open up opportunities to provide warmth and hospitality 
for sisters and brothers who are in need. God, at this very hour, you're hearing petitions offered unto you from churches all over. But we pray, Lord, that you would incline your ear to this corner of your kingdom, that you would hear our prayer as you have for these 194 years. We give you thanks, Lord, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that you would accept this, our sacrifice of praise, worship, and thanksgiving, and that all that we say, all that we sing, and all that we do, you would find it to be acceptable in your sight. For we come here for one reason and one reason only, Lord. That's to lift up the name of Jesus, to hold his blood-stained banner on high, and let this world know that it has a God that so loved it that he gave his only begotten Son, that we who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we pray, and the people of God said, Amen. scripture lesson taken from Psalm 62 verses 5 through 12. Hear now the word of the Lord. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times. O people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Men of low estate are but a breath. Men of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in exhortation. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice I have, have I heard this, that power belongs to God. And that to thee, O Lord, belongs steadfast love, for thou dost require a man according to his work. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God from all that dwell below the skies. Out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me.
Christ our Savior saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. selection from our choir.
church say amen. Amen again. What do you mean for the Holy Spirit? We thank and praise you, the Lord, for that choir selection today. Amen. God bless you, choir. Folk to get up in the cold and to come to the ice and snow, they're going to sing today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You, you're here today because you really want to be here. Hallelujah. And we're glad that God has allowed us to be here safe and sound. That has allowed us to gather in this sacred place one more time. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome each and every one of you. To St. John AME Church, if this is your very first time with us at St. John, God bless you and welcome. You're only a stranger once. Please come see us again. And if you're back with us for the first time in a long time, it's good to see you and welcome back home. And to our online worshiping congregation, God bless you. And we pray that you are safe and well wherever you are. And please be sure to say good morning to us and good morning to one another in the chat and to let us know that God is blessing you on this glorious day. Our scripture lesson was taken from Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12, and we don't usually on Sunday hear a lot from Psalm, uh, the book of Psalms, but today the Lord has a word for us from uh, the 62nd Psalm of David, uh, chapter 62, uh, not chapter, but Psalm 62, uh, as, as the dean of the annual conference, I would quickly correct somebody if they said chapter. It's not a chapter. It's Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12, with particular emphasis on our key verse, verse 5. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. I'd like you to think with me and pray with me this morning on the theme relevant to our subject matter taken directly from verse 5, for God alone. Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and lone. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. We've been taught from an early age not to place all our eggs in one basket. Have you heard that? Implicit in that message is we do better when we spread things out. Just in case the basket is stolen, just in case the basket is lost, just in case the basket is damaged, all our eggs don't go with it. Now, generally speaking, putting all our eggs in one basket is a solid and prudent practice. However, from a theological standpoint, I submit to you today that it is a dangerous practice. There are multiple gods from which we may choose to place our trust. But I've come here today to tell you there is only one true and living God. In case you don't know who that God is, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah. He's the God of Joseph and Mary. And yes, he's the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. We need to place all of our eggs in one basket theologically because there's no other God in whom we can trust. It is dangerous to spread your faith out amongst other gods. Have a little faith in this God and a little faith in that God. You can remember the Apostle Paul saying that the men of Athens were very religious people because they even had a shrine dedicated to the unknown God. In case they had checked all the boxes and missed one, they did not want to offend one and said, we don't know who you are, but in case you're out there, we want to be able to give honor to you. But I've come here today to tell you that there's only one God. 
That's the God in whom we place all of our faith eggs into his basket because there is no other God but the God of Abraham. You may say, well, Brother Pastor, why are you so dogmatic about this? I'm only echoing what God said himself. A little earlier, we gave the, the Decalogue, and in the Decalogue, the very first law of Moses that God gave him was in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 3, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. See, church, God was not planned when he said that thou should have no other gods before me, nor was God merely giving us a suggestion. God meant exactly what God said, that there are no other gods but him. Money is not our God. I'm glad the choir sang what they sang because we'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Silver and gold are not our God. Money is not our God. Career is not our God. Husband is not our God. Wife is not our God. Children is not our God. Our house is not our God. Our car is not our God. Our social status is not our God. Our educational degrees are not our God. All of them are great. All of them are good. All of them are blessings in our life. But there's only one God. Amen. And yet people make false idols out of these things. Every day of their lives. There are people living large who are miserable because they want to live even larger. John D. Rockefeller, one of the richest people to ever live on earth, was once asked by a reporter, Mr. Rockefeller, how much money is enough? To which Rockefeller calmly replied, just a little bit more. In other words, for all of his fame and fortune, it wasn't enough. Rockefeller, with all that he had, still wanted more. There's some folks out here, remember when you were riding the bus and now God has given you a Ford and you're mad because you don't have a Benz. No doubt that Rockefeller and others like him found security in their wealth, but we can get in our cars and drive just about 10 minutes from here to Lakeview Cemetery and find Rockefeller's grave. Your wealth won't keep you out of the cemetery, but Jesus has made a way for you to go beyond the cemetery and into everlasting life. Wealth is great, but it can only take you so far. See, David understood that God and God alone is the only one in whom we can place our ultimate trust. In saying this, David drew from his own experience. He says that his soul waited for God in silence. Somebody say silence. Somebody type into the chat in silence. I remember when I was growing up, people would say to me, silence is golden. In other words, sit down, be quiet, and listen. Keep your mouth shut, because when you keep your mouth shut, you can get some intelligence into your brain and don't spew out your ignorance. So in God's silence, David waited for the Lord. He wasn't trying to tell the Lord what God should do. He was waiting for God to tell him what God had to reveal unto him. Every now and then, church, we need to be in a state of silence. We don't need to say anything, and nobody needs to say anything to us. Because it's in these silent moments that we're able to hear from God. So the context of this psalm is David is listening. And in his listening, David has hope. And the source of David's hope is God. And when David speaks of hope, he's not just speaking of, of a wish. Because when you read this text in the original Hebrew, you get the word tiqua. And hope in English is both a noun and it's a verb. And tiqua in Hebrew is a noun. And it's related to the verb 
kwawa, which means to hope for or to wish for. So in Hebrew and in English, hope is both a noun and it can be a verb. However, this hope that David speaks of is not a passive hope. It's not a stab in the dark or just some flowery wish. This is not Jiminy Cricket singing the movie Pinocchio, When You Wish Upon a Star. Makes no difference who you are. Anything your heart desires will come to you. This is not a Jiminy Cricket type of hope. For in Hebrew, Tikwa, there's a far more urgent understanding, which means to wait expectantly for or to wait with eager anticipation. In this psalm, David exhibits the same understanding that we get in Isaiah, the 40th chapter and the 31st verse. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They have this tiqua, this hope. It gets translated as wait, but those that hope on the Lord will renew their strength. We're not just rolling the dice hoping we get a lucky number. Our hope comes from a God who absolutely will deliver for us when we call upon his name in faith. This is our hope backed up by a God that can do anything but fail. See, some of us right here and right now are waiting and hoping on the Lord for a breakthrough in our lives. Somebody under the sound of my voice is waiting for reconciliation, waiting and hoping for restoration, waiting and hoping for divine revelation. Somebody is waiting and hoping for healing, waiting and hoping for help, and waiting and hoping for wholeness. And the one for whom we wait, the one upon whom we hope, is the Lord God. He's the only one in whom we place our hope and our trust. So look at what David says in verses 6 through 8 of the text. He only is my rock and my salvation. My fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. See, David's theology is easy to understand. Trust in God at all times. In good times, trust in God. In bad times, trust in God. In certain times, trust in God. And in uncertain times, trust in God. In all things, place your trust in God. You may not like the way things are going. You may not understand the way things are going. But trust that you are going in the Lord. Now let me give you another Hebrew word in order to make the point. Here David used the Hebrew word bata. Somebody say bata. And Old Testament scholars and theologians say that bata occurs 48 times in Psalms. Bata in Hebrew has the sense of people's feeling secure or safe. Their security and their safety is in the context of them placing themselves confidently in God's hands regardless of their present situation. That you know that even though there might be danger all around you, you have that bata security said that even though I'm in a dangerous place, even though I'm in an uncomfortable place, even though I'm in a precarious situation, I can echo the words of scripture that says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It may not make sense to you, it may not make sense to you, but I have that bata security that even though the doctor hasn't given me a good report, I know that I serve Jesus, the great physician, even though the economy is up and down and sometimes my finances might not be where they ought to be. I have that bata security that God will give me this day my daily bread, even though folks may rise up against me and I may have an enemy on my right and an enemy on my left. I have that bata 
security that I have a friend in Jesus. See, I want you to really understand what David is saying in the Psalms. Because in English, sometimes we lose the intensity of the translation. This hope is not rolling the dice or going down to the casino. I know you all are Methodists. You don't know what the casino is. And hoping you get the lucky number. That, that's a different type of hope. It's not the security of you setting the, the numbers on your keypad, hoping that the alarm goes off when the thief breaks in your life. The tikwa is a different hope, and bata is a different hope, a hope that takes you not just through this life, but into the life that is to come. See, the author of Proverbs, the third chapter and the fifth verse, also used the word bata. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. See once again David is directing the hearers of this psalm to put all their eggs in one basket. That's God's basket. Trusting God and God alone. As I pondered the significance of Psalm 62 and its relevance to our lives today, my mind went to the current state of affairs in the world. There are wars being waged in Gaza, Sudan, and Ukraine at this very moment. Diplomacy is failing and fighting is proliferating. In the last three years, and lost in the news, you don't hear much about this, but it's out there, in the last three years, the following African nations in the Sahel region of Africa had their governments overthrown by military coups. Mali, Chad, Guinea, Sudan, Burkina Faso, and Niger. All of these are serious threats to human rights and global safety. And you don't have to go over to Africa. You can stay right here in the Western Hemisphere and travel south to Haiti, where armed gangs are running wild in the capital of Port-au-Prince and the capital is under siege with violence and anarchy. And to add insult to injury, cholera is running rampant not only in Haiti, but also in the African nation of Malawi. I say that to you this morning to impress upon you the fact that people of color around the globe are in crisis and the media is saying very little about it. It's easy to be discouraged with so much turmoil in the world. It's tempting to pack up our faith and put it away and say that it doesn't matter because nothing's going to change. But in these desperate times and in these low moments of the human condition around the world, David's words in Psalm 62 encourage us and give us hope. Because these words were written for those who sought refuge from their adversaries. That's what Psalm 62 is about. It's written for those who seek refuge from their adversaries. These words that David penned were meant for those whose lives were torn asunder by the enemy. And for people who desperately needed security, bata, security and stability. In these insecure and unstable times, it's good to know that we serve a God, a God who will ultimately deliver us, deliver us from security to insecurity to security, deliver us from instability to stability, deliver us from injustice to justice, and deliver us from war to peace. But the key, according to David, is placing our hope and our trust in God. I thank God for what the diplomats are trying to do. Thank God for, for what all the, the people around the, the globe are trying to do to bring peace. But the only way peace is going to come to this earth is when we lift our eyes up to the hills knowing that our help comes from the Lord. 
It won't come from the United Nations. It won't come from Geneva. It won't come from the Secretary of State. It won't come from the Department of Defense. It won't come from the President. It won't come from the Prime Minister. It won't come from a king. It won't come from a queen. It will only come from God. The hope and trust that's backed up by an unwavering faith that God can deliver and that God will deliver for God's people. And speaking of God's people, I'm not talking about some abstract anonymous group. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about you listening out there, wherever you are in the video world. Just as we have faith in God to right the wrong of the things in the world, our faith must also apply to our own lives. If God can straighten out Malawi and Haiti, he can straighten out things in your life. And by faith, we thank and we praise God in advance for what God and God alone will do. So I ask you the question this morning, friends, in whose basket are you placing your eggs? Now, I know you're a good Methodist and you don't know any songs that aren't in the hymnal. But Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald had a famous duet that I love to hear sung. It says, I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. I'm betting everything I've got on you. I'm giving all my love to one baby. Lord, help me if my baby don't come through. I know you don't know that song. But I've got good news for you today. We can confidently put all our eggs in one basket. We can place all our faith in a God who never fails. And when we do so, we can pray, Lord, help me, because I know my God will always come through. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for David's faith. We thank you, Lord, that we have a Tiqua hope, that we have Bata security, a hope that sustains us and a security that protects us, not just from, from physical hurt, harm, or danger, but protects us from spiritual warfare and from the stealing of our very soul. We thank you, Lord, that you are the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, that your blood atoned for our sin, gave us a right to the tree of life, so create within us a clean heart. Put a new and right spirit within us. And set our feet on the golden pathway of righteousness and leads to salvation and everlasting life. And we will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. The doors of the church are open. We have persons in our midst who have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life, we invite you to come down one of these aisles and give me as pastor your hand, but more importantly, give Christ as Savior in your heart. If you've accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, but do not have a church home, we offer St. John to you today. You may join us by coming down one of these aisles. The doors of the church are open to our online worshiping audience. You may join us by writing to St. John AME Church, 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. You may call us at 216-431-2560 or email us at St. John AME Church, C-L-E-V at gmail.com. Let me know, Pastor Curtis, I've accepted Christ, or Pastor Curtis, I've already accepted Christ, but I want to unite with St. John. We want to hear from you today. As persons respond to the invitation, let us stand and join the choir and singing, I will trust in the Lord.
offering time when we thank and praise God for the bounty that God pours into our life each and every moment of our lives. And we thank God for you who give faithfully of your tithes and offerings to support the life and ministry of St. John AME Church. We thank our online congregation for doing the same. For those of you who are not here, and you can give your offering to St. John AME Church and send that to 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. You may also give through the Giveify digital giving app, giveify.com, and find St. John AME Church Cleveland and give your offering through that platform. Let us now give cheerfully and generously to God who gives to us. Again, our weekly ministry activities are in full effect with Tuesday Bible study on the conference call line, Wednesday prayer meditation virtually, and Thursday choir rehearsal at 6 o'clock. GCC is very active. They have an engaged GCC assembly on Thursday, January 25th at 7 o'clock via Zoom, and you may contact Sister Louise McKinney to receive the link. Also, GCC is kicking off 2024 with an action on Thursday. January 30th at 7 o'clock at Shiloh Baptist Church at 5500 Scoville Avenue. It will also be accessible online. The mayor will be there and there will be other activities uh, dealing with uh, the constitutional uh, amendment uh, in Ohio. Also, my house ministry uh, led by Sister Pam Cooper and Sheila Monday, who are here, will meet on Saturday, February the 3rd at 9.30 a.m. here in the church. And our steward and trustee boards meeting will be on February 3rd at 11 on Zoom. Any agenda items should be submitted to me by January 31st. Also, the Cleveland District will have Founders Day worship service Sunday, February the 4th at 3 o'clock. Greater Mitchell Chapel AME Church at 192 South Adams Street in Mansfield, Ohio, where the Reverend Wesley I. Reed will preach. Also, the GCC is looking for volunteers for an administrative and logistics organizer. Uh, that person has resigned and they need some persons with that experience to fill in the gaps until somebody is appointed to fulfill that spot. And they have meetings coming up on January the 20th and February the 30th. 
And if you can help GCC uh, fill in those gaps, please email info, I-N-F-O, at gcc-ohio.org. Utility bill and rent payment assistance is uh, upon us, and we have persons who may have need help for their uh, utility bills. You may contact 216-513-8639. And also the shoe collection drive is still in effect. I believe this will go till February, and you may see Delcenia Brown or call William Turner at 330-328-9860. And Power Up Purchasing Cooperative is hiring. Uh, this has been a beneficial uh, agreement that we've had with uh, St. John, and they're looking for somebody uh, who can work uh, for six months at 20 to 30 hours a week. And the job description is in the link. And for those of you online, if you need that link, please email the church office and we will send it to you. And the Adams Board of Cuyahoga County is here to help persons. Again, you need to know the number 988 just like you know the number 911 to help persons in need and to help save a life. And I've got one other announcement. Today is Ebony's birthday. Happy birthday. God bless you. All right, let us stand for our closing song. Oh, Jerry, happy birthday, Jerry. Right, let us have our closing song. blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now henceforth and forevermore. Until then, goodbye.